Hello everyone, this is Albert from D20 Pro over at Mesa Mundi. Um, I am here to talk to you today a little bit about our lighting and how lights work and also show you a little bit more about doors and what you can do with doors in the current shadow casting system for D20 Pro 3.6.1 and above. So right away what I've got is a GM view here where I've got some creatures with some light sources on them. You can see as I move these guys around I've set this up to be player one. Um, the light moves along with them and reveals the map and allows for exploring the area. So as this character moves over towards this door one of the doors is open and you can see that you can actually see through the door. So if I come through and I close that door and refresh you'll see that the door in fact, closes and the character is unable to see through. And clicking again opens the door and they can go through. And if I open the second door, their light then casts through both sides. Pretty cool. So this is nice. It allows you to go through and let's close these guys. Um, go through, have your players actually explore. As they explore, you can open a door and reveal just along the path that they're able to see. Uh, there is some other stuff going on at the top. I'll cover that in just a second. Uh, so this character is a wizard. And this wizard has the ability to cast Wizard Eye. So what I've done is I've modeled our character's Wizard Eye. Um, and so what's going on is that the character has this token, which it can move around the map uh, after I assign him ownership. So this is the, this is the creature's Wizard Eye and he can use that to explore. And it has, you know, crazy good range, has a nice color to it, and can wander around, be discovered, destroyed, you know, whatever you want to do. This could be a, um, this could be a flaming sphere. It could be, uh, you know, a scry sensor, pretty much anything you want. What's cool is that this light source belonging to this character, he's able to only see the lights belonging to him. The way that this is handled is through the light properties. So if we go over here and we take a look at the sensor and we take a look at its light, uh, interesting, uh, that is incorrect. Let's take a look here. So if we take a look at the Palantir and its uh, scrying sensor, there we go. so it was attached, just not showing up. Um, and the owner is our 10th level wizard. Let's do wizard and make sure that that's all right. So you can set an independent owner and an independent tether. You can also have it enabled so the light is on or off or public so it is viewable to all players and creatures or private so it is only viewable to the creature who owns this light source. So that means that even though the scrying sensor is the tethered target, meaning that it's attached to the sensor, Technically, the scrying sensor can't see by its light, but the 10th level wizard can. Uh, this is great for modeling things like fairy fire or, um, you know, or uh, see invisible. You could use see invisible for a creature and drop little five foot light sources on people that are only visible to the creature who casts see invisible. Um, you know, there's a lot of interesting little fun things you can do to make this go. Um, I mentioned this in the previous video. The radius here is specified in grid units. So this is actually a 12 grid unit radius, so 24 across. Um, and this you know, translates in this current case to about five feet per unit. So, uh, and then clicking on okay, you can see that in the light menu, we have name, tether, and owner. This first column is on or off. The second column is public or private. And then this last one will actually center the map. Oops, <laughs> will center the map to the light source. So if I want to see where's this light source, it'll actually bring the map over and show me where that's at. Um, this is convenience tools for the GM. The player doesn't have those kind of tools right now. Uh, so keep that in mind when when telling your players to find their light sources if they've got some you know creature running around. Now what you can do is because you can attach these, if we add this guy to the initiative uh, we can just click on him from the player side. And this demo has a lot of stuff going on. So uh, the roster normally is not this crowded. Um, so keep that in mind as well. All right. So 
back to short showing you what else we can do. So one of the other things we can do that's pretty cool is make this panel a little smaller. And if we come over to this character who is hanging out over here, he is standing next to a standard dungeon feature called Portcullis. Let's give him a light source. So we'll give him uh, 15 by 30 and refresh it. And now this player has a light that's able to pass through the bars and shine into the next room. These bars are little triangles that I made using doors. So these are actually door objects. So if we go into visibility and we bend these bars, you will see that now there's an opening. And so if you take out the next set, you know, so on and so forth. And this is certainly overkill, it's not necessary but it certainly looks cool so you know it's a it's a trick worth showing and uh and it has a nice effect for your players especially if there's uh intentionally like a gap in the wall or something like that that their light would cast into to reveal a secret door or or something along those lines um now we've got one other thing for me to show you in this one uh let me get out of this mode zoom out here and we're going to switch over take our wizard and bring him over here into this room and let's center our map so what we've got is a player and a creature so in this case our creature is this dwarf character over here um, this dwarf as you can see has a very good light source he's able to see all over the place um, this dwarf has dark vision which makes sense so as this wizard, this human wizard moves along, he's unable to see the dwarf's dark vision. As he moves in, he's able to see the monsters based off of where his light intersects with them. But the character is unable to see the dwarf while the dwarf would very much be able to see the player. Case in point, if we go in and we say, give the dwarf ownership as player one, and let's change this to be mine. And now if we refresh and let's bring, let's bring this guy back over here. So this creature, this human here has lights that are public, public and public, or this one is not, that's his Palantir, his is a scrying thing. So anyway, so the dwarf is able to see his public lights and therefore also see the creature. Uh, however, if this creature is around the corner, uh, oh, yes, great. In this case, you would still be able to see the creature because uh, the fog of war is set. It's already been explored. Um, if I go in and I toggle the visibility on it, though, then the creature will disappear, but the light source doesn't. So you, this guy would be able to tell that somebody's coming down a hall. Uh, as you can see, there's line of sight from here to here. And so that light source is very much visible uh, to this character while his light source on the other hand is not. And so as we move in, toggle visibility, and you can see that the combination of the light sources becomes visible. So the last thing to go over is uh, how to edit, just to quickly give you a tour of this toolbar, this tool menu. Um, Double clicking brings you into the edit light and that lets you change ownership, fill color, uh, opacity of the fill color, the ring color, which is in this case, this yellow ring you see, um, excuse me, and the opacity of the ring color. Um, and then also the owner, in this case, is gonna show every creature on this map, which this was a dungeon based around mimics. So there's a lot of treasure chests, um, again, tether, same sort of thing, where you can see all the different creatures available to tether the light source to. And the way this works is tethering determines uh, what object on the map the light is attached to. It doesn't have to be attached to any object. You could drag a light around as a GM, and so you could place lamps or things like that. But you won't be able to move that without going into the light panel. Uh, there's no other way for you to see the light uh, centroid and move it cleanly. Uh, you can, well, let me finish with this and then I'll show you that. All right, 
So clicking OK would commit those changes and, and so on. So if we create a new light, and we'll just call this rando, and it's going to be have a radius of three, it's going to be enabled and public, and we'll give it a fill color of this blue and a ring color of red just for the sake of contrast. And no owner and no tether, when we say OK, we get this light source and we can move it around and it will appropriately uh, light an area. However, there's no way to grab that light and move it um, without entering into the fog of war mode. So something to keep in mind, if you're doing a lot of work with fog of war mode, you need to be able to switch back to this visibility right now while we're still using the tabs. And then that's the one you wanna be in uh, generally when you leave the game tools, because that's gonna let you go through and hit the fog of war button and toggle fog of war visibility quickly and easily. You can use, without pulling up the game tools, the, you can use the H key to switch modes. So now I'm in draw mode, I'm in mold mode, and now I'm in light mode. Once I'm in light mode, I can take a light source and drag it around, despite the fact that um, that is not tethered or attached to something. So as a GM, you can manipulate these lights um, without having to have the light menu open, so long as you've already instantiated the lights and they exist in your map. That is the core of uh, fun with lights, and I hope that that is helpful to you, and I look forward to seeing what you guys create. All right. Thanks. This is Owlbear with uh, D20 Pro.